Hello, welcome to Lighthouse Stamping with Lorraine. I'm glad you could join me again. Today we're going to be making another Halloween card. Um, this one is a Halloween Slimline Faux Stepper card. I know that's a mouthful. I'm going to show you the card in just a minute. And we are going to be using the Stamparatus today in a few minutes, and I will show you how we use that. Um, I've used the Stamparatus since I've been on air, so we'll be using that. And so I'm going to set that off to the side for the moment and show you what we're making. This is the Slimline card. It does fit into a standard business size envelope. Get that in here so you can see it. Just, just you know, just a standard envelope. Just bought a box of them. They work really good. Um, we also sell colored envelopes too on and stamping up, but whatever you have. And so this is the card we're making, and I'm gonna and this is the back so you can sign it. But the card stands up like this. So you can see all the different steps. And let's hold it this way. You can show different angles here so you can see it. But this is my version of the kids going out trick-or-treating on a scary night, sort of foggy and gloomy. And we've got the moon and the house and the cats and the children. So I'm gonna show you how to make this card. It is, it may look complicated, but it is one of the easiest cards to make. Get a lot of folds in it. So we're gonna go from there and I will show you how to make this card. I have cut out many of the pieces ahead of time just to set, I'm set this off to the side here so I have it in front of me. Um, I've cut many of the pieces out ahead of time to um, save us some time. So I want to concentrate on building the card and how I did all the stamping on it. We are going to be using Scary Cute once again because these are great silhouettes for making this card. And we're using this stamp here out of Artistically Inked. Um, it is going to give us, oh, if I drop it, the background for our sky. This, this set, it lends itself, it does make beautiful floral bouquets and stuff, and I will actually be doing some of those in a few weeks, but it really lends itself to being a background for something else too. So we will do that. So we'll be using those, and so I've done a lot, so I'm going to get out the pe the main piece here, and then we will show you the final pieces, or the final pieces, the last pieces. So what you're going to need is a piece of cardstock, let me get my board out here, that is 9 inches by 8 inches. And this is going to make our base. And once again, as you've all, probably if you've watched me before, you know, I'm getting ready to, to measure something, and Lori forgot to put her glasses on. We took care of that right now. So make sure you're on the eight inch side, and you're going to want to score this at one, two, four, six, and seven. That is the end of our scoring for this card, except for the piece that goes, and I'll grab that right now, and I've already scored it. This is the front piece of our card, and it is scored at three and three-fourths. That is all the scoring you need. So we're going to go ahead and fold this up and get this all burnished. Let me grab my bowl and folder. So the center one here, we're going to do it first, is going to be a mountain. Okay? And so that means the next one in on both sides is a valley. And the next one is a mountain. And it's the exact same side of another valley. And a mountain. So now we have this, that, like something on it. So that's the card there so far. This is the piece here. <clears throat> We're not installing this quite yet, but it's going to go like this, okay? Actually, we'll go ahead and install it right now. Then make it easier so you can see what I'm doing. 
So what you want to do is grab a pencil, something you can see, and I'm not sure you will actually be able to see this on here. Make sure I got these felt correctly. And a ruler. I'm going to actually use an actual ruler on this. And you want to, and I forgot the measurement. I didn't write it down. Hang on here. You want to come over two and a half inches and put a little teeny mark right there. I know you can hardly see it, but there is, take my word for it, there is. And two and a half inches from this side. And you're not gonna see this mark, but we're, we can erase it too. So this is going to tell us where this gets glued in. And it only gets glued to the front panel. And this should fit, if you've put your marks in, it's pretty much, which it has, covered up my little marks. It's, those marks are just to show you where this card is going to lie. So we're going to add some glue. You want to make sure when you glue it or tape it, whatever you choose, that you are flush with the bottom here. So I'm going to take and go ahead and do this. Put the glue right in between those two little lines so you don't uh, have glue outside of it. Make sure I see my line there. Even for me on Night of Navy is difficult. I played around using different colors and I discovered that the Nine and Navy I thought was, I didn't want to use black because the silhouettes were going to be black. So, and then I'm going to fold this back over right where I had it and give it a good press and make sure we are lined up at the, at the bottom there. Just like that. Then we're going to flip it over and and you can see where your where your glue is going to stop because you're looking at this up here. And we'll put that one in. And make sure it lines up, and it should line up almost perfect. So that that's basically the base of your card. This is a faux stepper. Um, much easier than doing a, an actual stepper card, which I like doing stepper cards, but on a slim line, your space is so limited, it was easier, I thought, to do a faux stepper, and I liked it. So just one moment, I need a drink. And while I'm taking that drink, I'll let you know. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video. Help me grow in YouTube world. You will find all the dimensions, all the supplies I use listed below. Also below is my email address. I love to hear from people and find out what you'd like to see me make next or in the near future. With Christmas coming, I need all the ideas, you know, anything you give me that you would like to see made. Um, there was a suggestion about Christmas ornaments, but I'd like to hear from you. Do you want to see how I make Christmas ornaments? And I do make quite a few. Um, I would be interested in hearing from you. Also, there is a fa new Facebook group. It's called Lighthouse Stamping. It is a private group. You have to answer two very simple questions and then you'll be admitted to the private group. Um, on this YouTube channel or Facebook channel, I'm going to be announcing sales, uh, potential classes for people, um, just general news as well as posting pictures and other people can post pictures on there as well of things that are inspired from what you see me make. And so we, everybody loves to see your pictures. Like I said, it is a it's a small group right now, but we'd like to grow it. Um, at some point, if there's enough people on there, we'd like to try to do some lives over on Facebook. So please consider joining my Facebook group over there. It's called Lighthouse Stamping. So enough with that. And there's also a link to my online store there as well. And if you don't have a Stamping Up demonstrator, I would love to be yours. Um, and if you have questions about the Stamping Up products I've used or something from a catalog you've seen and you're not sure how something works, just send me a quick email. I do answer my emails. So with that being said, let's move back to the card. <clears throat> so let me get out the rest of the parts and I'll set that off to the side. So I, like I said, I've done a lot of stamping and stuff. I'm going to show you how I did each step. So I've already did the back and I've done some stamping and with some of the little guys, but we're going to finish those up. And I did make a lot of these uh, pieces that go on the card. I'm going to show you how to do that. But I'm going to show you how I made this smoky slate 
paper look like that. So it's quite a different change, a look for that paper. So I wanna show you how I got there. So this is Smoky Slate and this piece of paper is two and three quarters by nine. So it is the same length as the card base. And this our silhouette stamping here first. And we're gonna do the silhouettes before we do all of the overlay coloring. That's what I'm gonna call it. So I am gonna grab my Stamparatus and we're gonna get the Stamparatus set up now. I'm gonna grab my magnets here. I have to do be, hold them in my hand until I'm ready to place them. I have a steel desk I'm working on. And if I set these on my steel desk, they don't move. <laughs> And they make it fun. So we're going to stamp this. And so I put him in over here and I stamped these two little guys together. But now we're going to be working. We want my little guy over here on this side. So the easiest way, because he's longer, the easiest way is just to flip it over and stamp him upside down. And there's nothing that says it can't be done. This is just a piece of our grid paper I have cut and laid overlaid here. Actually, I have a couple of them. Um... And so I just put that inside my Stamparatus and I find it helpful. So I know, I'm gonna set that down. I know that I only have two and a half inches to play with here. So I need to make sure that he's sitting somewhere right in this area here on my card. So I measure him here. I know that he needs to sit, if I look at the ruler, he needs to be sitting somewhere right around one and a half inches from this end. So I'm gonna measure out about one and a half inches. And I've already grabbed my little guy here, keeping in mind that I'm going to be working upside down because I want him to go the same way as the others. And I'm going to line him up. I can look across here and see about how high he is. And I'm going to put him right about there. So you can count these also, your grids here. One, two, three, four. That's an inch. One, two, three, four. That's two inches. So that's two inches there. And I have another half inch to play. So I'm going to move him over just a tad more. So I don't want him to fall inside of the other one. So I just line him up. And I'm going to go ahead and stick my magnets down to hold him nice and tight and close this and he's all loaded stamparatus is great that's the other thing this does mine does not move because i'm working on a steel desk yours will move so if you know make sure you've got in a good sturdy area we're going to use memento and i will tell you you are going to have to get the black color deep black color this you're going to have to stamp over this maybe three, four times. So we're going to grab the memento. I'm going to get him all covered up for the first stamping. And I'm grabbing something. I know other people have different things. This is a tennis ball. I just keep a ring from painter's tape, throw it in like that. This is so I can get a good press on this. I can't press with my hands on the Stamparatus, but this really does help. Just the perfect size. So you can see we're not really black yet. Like I said, it does take a little time. That's why I said I did most of this ahead of time because but it's worth it because it does give a great look. I tried to do this just freehand and I could not get the depth of black I wanted. Um, you could use stays on to do this as well, which I thought about, but I decided to go with Memento. He's darkened up every time. Like I said, it takes you know, as many times as it takes. Now these two I stamped at the same time. 
because they were on the same side and they were you know, right next to each other, so why not? Oh, we're almost there. Maybe one or two more times. So if you want to do a silhouette and you really want it black, um, you know, make sure you re-ink your, your pad before you start, which I did. Oh, there we go. I'm going to give it one more shot because it's just a little fainter than the others. And I want him nice and black. There we go. Now he's a nice dark color. I do see a couple little white spots I'm not real happy with. If you see a little white spot you're not happy with, grab a, this is just a Uniball black gel pen. You know, just a regular writing pen is what I use for every day. I have a little black white dot there. I just, I had a little more than I wanted in a couple little spots. So, uh, one more in his head. All gone. So if you have one little spot that just won't get covered, take a little gel pen and cover it up. So that is all we're going to do for this. Let me get these out. Oh, and do not do what I just did. Do not let them go together. Um, if you're wondering, this is just duct tape. I wrapped around so it's easier for me to grab hold of them. I'm going to go ahead and close this for now and I'll come back and clean him up later these back over here. So next we're going to, and I just got some scrap paper. Now we've got to make him look the, like the night sky. And to achieve those, I used Pool Party and Night of Navy, but not Night of Navy full strength. We are going to stamp off. So first we're going to do the, the um, using this stamp, the Pool Party. Excuse me. And the pull party is going to go on full strength. So we're just doing a little tapping, make sure we've got enough ink. And I'm going to do just a couple generations to run out of ink. Turn the block around different directions. Now this center section, you're not going to see unless you look into the hole, into the card. But I thought I should go ahead and make sure it had colored ink. Yeah, that's perfect. And they can overlap. It's fine. So I'm putting a little bit of pull part. I think I want a little more right here. Just like that. Now we're going to go into Night of Navy. And I'm not even going to bother cleaning because we, we've stamped off this. So there's not that much ink left. Virtually none. And we're going into a much darker color. So if you're going into a much darker color and there's not much ink, you don't have to clean your stamps in between. Um, and, but just remember, it has to be a lot darker. So we're going to stamp this off once before we go on because if you did it that way, it's way too dark. And we can get a couple, you know, like two more generations here. And I'm just going around, stamping, turning. Yeah, let's do a little more down here. Get a little bit in between the kids over here. They look a little lost. But I think that'll do. All I wanted it to do would like look like a very gloomy night sky. You know, it's supposed to be Halloween. It's supposed to be a little on the scary side. So that's all the stamping we're going to do. Let's get that out of my way. So let's go ahead and build this card. So the first piece we're going to print in is this piece. And what you're going to do is decide which is your front and back. And you're going to slide this in just like that. So these kids are going to be running towards the house and this child is running away from the house. Because the house is going right here. So we're going to go ahead and put this one in first. 
And I found the easiest way to do this was to add a little glue just along the bottom because you're gonna, you have, you know, two inches roughly here that you're gonna be gluing onto right here. So just keep that in mind. Look at your grid. You don't have to go all the way up. I'm just gonna go up about like that. Just enough to make sure it holds in place. Flip it over. Hold your card and just slide it in here, but trying not to hit the back wall yet. Line it up. So it's lined up on the sides and close your card. Let that sit for a second. So then I made a bunch of parts here. I already did the back of the card just to speed things up. It says, oh, I did two. See, I had a big blob here, so I flipped it over, but you won't tell. I already did this so to help speed this up because it was going to be a long video because of the everything. And this just goes on the back. Now, I didn't put any shading or anything on this. It's a nice little border because you need to be able to have a place to write. And you could add more panels here. You could add more kids here if you wanted. But this was the front of my card. And then this is the little kids walking. Now these little guys are walking away here and they're gonna go on this panel. And this one here with a little light, he's gonna go there. But I looked at him and I said, oh no, he needs some color. So I took uh, Dark Daffodil Light and went into his little thing here and just add a little color there. It's not real bright, because um, you are got darker colors, but you can still tell it's, it's light. So we're gonna glue these little guys on here. And once again, we're just holding the glue towards the bottom. And these guys have no border. You're gonna go right to the bottom right to the side, Oops. I gotta close this, and right over to this piece here. These, they have a nice little snug fit. And this guy here, we'll put glue on the bottom. Just remember the top's gonna be sticking out, so you don't want the top you know, having glue on it. And we'll just tuck him right in there, make sure he's all lined up. Now this piece looks like looks like it's square. It is not square. This piece is three and seven eighths by five and three eighths. <laughs> so when you do do this, make sure because when you go to put it on, you'll notice it is longer. Um, you want to make sure that you have going the right direction. And this does have a little like about a one eighth inch border around it. So we're going to go ahead and glue that down. I think this would be pretty in some other colors. Um, you know, you could use just dark gray or something else. So, you put that there. So, I went ahead and cut some skies. And um, I cut a full moon. Now, there is a quarter moon in this set that you can die cut. But it was Halloween and I needed a full moon. So, <clears throat> you could use... This little guy here, this little circle, kind of the layering circle dies. Or if you have a one inch circle punch, you could cheat like I did. <laughs> and I grabbed the one inch circle punch. So, but there is this die there that you can use as well. So in here, we're gonna put the, the house frame in here. And I've shown you how to put these in here before. You can use glue, you can use glue dots, you know, whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and use glue this time and I'm gonna grab a silicone mat to do that. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue around the edge here. Oop, that's why I'm using the silicone mat. So I'm going off and a little bit down through the center here. Like I said, you can do glue dots if you want. I did that in a previous video. 
but I decided I want to glue this down a little bit. And then I've set him off the side a little bit here, not, so he's not exactly in the center. And then I cut out a parakeet party, say boo and scare on. And this is a little die that comes in the very cute. I've cut a moon out of Daffodil Delight, a one inch moon. We'll put him on next. I'm just using a post-it to hold all the pieces that I cut out. Like that. And then I made a house and a cat. This time, my house has lights inside of it. And my cat has parakeet green eyes. So all I did was take some little scraps and stamp her little piece under the back, glued them to the back, so no one's going to see the back side of it. And I thought it looked rather cool. So I'm going to put a little more glue on. There's a little, little bit of stickiness because of the, <clears throat> the tape I used to. I just put some seal across it and put those pieces in. And I'm going to put this in here. My house is not going straight. I don't want it straight. This is, I'm going to put him this way at this angle. This is Halloween. It's scary. It's not supposed to be straight. And then I went ahead and put this on. Yeah, I did use dimensionals on this. So what I did first is I took my little scary cat. He's got a little ledge here. And I hooked him to this here. I put a little glue. Make sure my saying's going the right direction. Like I said before, get a little glue on there. It'll all come. It dries clear. If it's a little sticky, just take your embossing buddy over the top or a little bit of cornstarch or baking powder. Not baking powder. Cornstarch or baby powder or whatever you have in your supply. And I'm going to go ahead and put some dimensionals on this here. And where are my dimensionals? <clears throat> Like I said, I'm getting ready to do my 25 days of Christmas, which are going to start on, oh, what day does that start? I think it's the 21st. Now I got to look, just a moment. My 25 days of Christmas are going to start on October 25th. This is when I'm going to jump into Christmas. I told you I haven't been ready for Christmas yet. Oop, he's too big. Let's just cut him in half. Or we'll grab one of these little pieces here. Um, so I am open to suggestions on cards, different styles you want, what you'd like to see, boxes, ornaments. You know, I would like to really know what you would like to see. So please email me and let me know. Um, I think it's fun to find out what other people would like to see. I do stuff I like, but I'd like to do stuff other people would like too. Got that a little sticky. Now we're gonna set him on here, just sort of where this piece meets here. So it looks like I'm just over from the little boy with the light. So he stands up like that. And we're just about there. Like I said, this was not, it's not a complicated card to make. It is a little too time consuming because you do have to, or you can, um, you do have to take and, um, you know, get everybody sort of lined up. Now, I am going to grab some mini dimensionals now. Maybe, there they are. We're going to use a couple mini dimensionals. I know you guys can't see that because it's sitting at a very weird angle. Oh, I'll move that. I have to have something to hold it down. Make sure I've got 
Believe it or not, there is a right side and a wrong side. I put these the right side up. These little, this, the big bats, these little, the dimen little mini dimensionals fit just inside of the big bats. We'd be using glue dots on the smaller ones. Just like that. I'm going to put a big bat, sort of an angle here. And we're going to put another big bat. Like I said, using, and I'll still use these post-its again, you know, for holding stuff on a little cranky or, you know, whatever, because they're still good, but they're great for when you're working on something with little pieces. And I think we'll put him flying over the house or maybe the count lives. And he will take the medium bat. Now we're going to go to glue dots. And I've showed you how to they get a small um, lift. Just roll the glue dot up in a little ball. And then do whatever you're using, your pokey tool. You can do this on a pair of tweezers too. Just do it with your fingers, actually. But I try not to do that too much. Oof, where'd he go? The bat's flying away. And then we're gonna put the medium sized bat here. So he'll be down a little lower. And then I have two little bats, two more. We'll put him. Get him off the paper. Take up her little bat up here. He's swooping down to get the little boy's hair. Does anybody else have bats where they live? I know they're all over, but we uh we have a, quite a few bats around our house. They're sort of fun when they, especially when they swarm in the late evening. Um, they will swarm in sometimes when somebody has fresh watered grass and stuff, and they'll come in eating whatever they eat. And we had a swarm here a couple months ago. It was pretty cool. We sat on the porch and watched them. Fascinating little creatures. I know one of our neighbors has a bat house. I haven't seen it, but... So, yeah, everybody thinks they're scary. I don't. I think they're cute. Not that I want to hold one, but I think they're cute. So we'll put him here. And this is our little scary cute card here. Got a few items raised up. You could raise up the house if you wanted, but we got kids walking to the house and kids leaving the house. And I think it's a really cute card. And I'm going to send these off to a couple friends with young children. <laughs> but yeah, I like it. So like I said before, please remember to like and subscribe to YouTube. Please join my Facebook group. Um, I'm hoping we can have a lot of fun over there. And it also, and when new things come out, um, if, you know, I don't really have a way to do YouTube and just, come out and tell you, hey, Stamping Up's having a 24-hour sale they had about a week ago. On Facebook, I can just pop in real quick and tell you, hey, we're going to have a 24-hour sale or we're going to have a free shipping day or whatever that may be. So that's where the information like that is going to be posted is on Facebook. So please go ahead and sign up for Facebook, but don't forget to subscribe to YouTube too. So I know I've asked you a lot from you and I really do appreciate all of you. So have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.